This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 7th day of September in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. President Irfan Ali today urged leaders of the Caribbean community CARICOM and Africa to work to deepen relationships and strengthen ties between the two regions. During his remarks at the inaugural Africa CARICOM Summit, the President said Africa and the Caribbean are no strangers to each other, and the two must strive for economic integration driven by people, as well as partnerships aimed at one objective, which will see the prosperity of the people in both regions. Our region suffered immensely from the fallout in the rising costs of commodities and transportation services during the pandemic. We must therefore address these issues through a common theme as we, the developing economies, will find it even more difficult to cope with and rebuild post-COVID. Having regards for all the above, achieving the SDGs as outlined in Agenda 2030 is, sev is severely threatened and we must all point this out to the global community. The President committed Guyana's sustained and strengthened relationship between the Caribbean and Africa and pledged the country's support to ensure the success of this endeavor between the two regions. Our regions represent creative and dynamic forces within the international community. As such, there is no reason why we should not initiate greater socio-economic collaboration. The onus remains on us to forge a path forward based on shared interests and common objectives. President Ali also told the Caribbean and African leaders that the summit was convened at an ideal time when citing the UN General Assembly and the Conference of Parties Conferences. He said the regions must chart the way forward and take a united message to the global community. For us, the global pandemic awakens the harsh reality of the differentiating treatment between a developed and developing world. It also re-emphasizes that fundamentally it is the developing world that suffers the most under these circumstances. I'm therefore of the view that this forced collaboration must address the COVID-19 pandemic and recovery, climate change mitigation and adaptation measures, food security, and costs of commodities and transportation. The virtual conference, which saw pledges made by both Africa and Caribbean leaders, was hosted by Kenya under the theme Unity Across Continents and Oceans, Opportunities for Deepening Integration. More news coming up in just a moment. I swear you're always late, Mom. Told you two hours ago I'm coming to take you on the road, and you still ain't ready yet? Not today. I hear you looking, I gotta pay my phone bill and my internet bill, and I can't find it in the post. You're bringing it just the other day, man. Like I said, you're always late. You know GTT sending you bills straight to your WhatsApp now with their new WhatsApp billing service? Let me show you how to sign up on the website. No more querying at the office. Doesn't matter if bills come late in the mail anymore. Even if you lose it again at the house, all you need to do from now on is open WhatsApp to access your monthly bills. I know you can tell me that. A message from Republic Bank. We've got exciting news. All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. Let 
GBTI make your dreams of owning a home a reality. Buy or build your home with us. Let us help you to completely outfit your home and make it move in ready. Need to purchase land? We finance that too. Benefit from our 10% down payment and interest rates as low as 4.25%. Calculated on the reducing balance with up to 30 years to repay. Switch your mortgage to us and learn about benefiting from the equity in your home. Invest wisely. Apply online or call your branch to schedule an appointment. GBTI. We see Guyana through your eyes. Welcome back. The number of COVID-19 deaths in Guyana increased by seven in the past 24 hours, pushing the country's death toll to 653. The Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, in his COVID-19 update this morning, revealed that all seven of the latest fatalities were unvaccinated. He said the Delta surge of the coronavirus, which Guyana is now experiencing, is putting a strain on the health institutions, with 37 persons currently in the COVID-19 intensive care unit and more than 100 others hospitalized. Over the last 24 hours, we have had uh, seven deaths. And unfortunately, uh, none of those persons who have died um, would have been vaccinated. So again, we just want to appeal to everyone, um, please go get yourself vaccinated. Um, you know, you require both doses to be fully immunized, but um, you can start today if you haven't gotten a vaccine. Just start today, go and get your first dose vaccine because vaccines do work, they're effective and they protect people. The health minister has revealed that the number of active cases of the virus in Guyana has now surged to over 2,400, with 161 new cases recorded in the past 24 hours alone. Based on the figures provided by the Ministry of Health, the country has recorded 28 COVID-19 related deaths and more than 1,100 new cases of the virus in the first five days of September. There are currently 13 pregnant women also hospitalized with COVID-19. So persons with complicated pregnancy normally would come into the Georgetown Public Hospital. They come from different parts of the country. Uh, so these 13 women, they They've all tested positive. That's a requirement now. Uh, when you come in, they test you to see whether or not uh, your COVID status to determine that. And so uh, 13 of these women have tested positive and um, we have to make special arrangements uh, for their delivery. Um, we have been seeing an increase in uh, COVID-19 infections among pregnant women. Uh, just the day before, we only had seven, but today we have 13 women who are uh, positive. As the Delta variant spreads across the country, the Minister of Health revealed that every region in Guyana is seeing new cases and has active cases. He has pleaded once again for citizens to follow the COVID-19 health regulations and make the choice to get vaccinated. While persons wishing to transact businesses inside of the commercial banks in Guyana must now produce their COVID-19 vaccination card or a recent negative COVID-19 PCR test result. In a public notice, the Guyana Association of Bankers announced the decision and said it is in keeping with the latest gasoline measures announced by the government. In the latest updated measures, it is a requirement for anyone entering a public building, including privately owned ones, to produce a negative COVID-19 test result or show proof of vaccination to be allowed entry. The commercial banks have indicated that unvaccinated persons can make an appointment to visit the banks, but when they do, they will still have to produce a negative COVID-19 PCR test result taken within seven days. The Guyana Association of Bankers represents all of the commercial banks in Guyana, including Republic Bank, GBTI, Scotiabank, the Marara Bank, Citizens Bank, NBS, and the Bank of Baroda, as well as the trust companies. The latest measures announced by the government have come under severe criticism, with many persons holding the view that the government is forcing them to get vaccinated. Since not too many persons can afford a regular PCR COVID-19 test result, which carries an average cost of $20,000 and is only valid for a few days. Georgetown Mayor Ubrej Narain today added his voice to the ongoing concerns being raised by citizens about the government's latest vaccination order. 
In a statement today, the mayor said he finds the development deeply worrying and believes that the government is using the pandemic as an excuse to exercise authoritarian tendencies. The mayor said he's particularly concerned about citizens who are unable to be vaccinated due to underlying conditions and are now being turned away from businesses. He said the government has yet to properly articulate a plan for citizens who, because of a medical reason, are advised against taking the vaccine. The mayor said those persons are restricted from accessing essential services of the state and even restricted from earning and feeding their families. He added that what is worse is that there is no mechanism to treat those persons or even officially acknowledge their limitations for consideration by the government. The Georgetown mayor also signaled his support for that court case that was filed by the trade union's movement and which will come up for hearing tomorrow. According to the mayor, the government has seemingly chosen a dictatorial approach rather than embarking on a robust public information campaign to dispel fears about the vaccine. Mayor Narine wants the government to reconsider its approach and consult with the people on the way forward. While the Citizenship Initiative political party has issued a call on the government to allow citizens a choice to be vaccinated or not, while encouraging other measures to protect them against COVID-19. In a statement, TCI said it has been following the developments with the vaccination mandates and it wants to see the government adopt a more broad-based approach in its campaign against the coronavirus. TCI reminded that of all the vaccines being procured and offered in Guyana, it is only the Pfizer vaccine that has received full approval, while the others remain on the emergency use authorization only. The political group said rather than the government placing all its eggs in one basket, it needs to encourage healthy habits such as diet, exercise and vitamin intake. TCI also said that it is unfortunate that public workers, such as teachers, nurses and ministry staffers, are being locked out of their livelihoods because they chose not to be vaccinated. Adding that if the government wants to implement a PCR testing mandate in lieu of vaccination, then it should make this available for free and use the proceeds from the oil earnings to procure the testing kits. The Citizenship Initiative said the government of Guyana should follow all avenues of data both for and against vaccination and in turn craft policies that will not be discriminatory. The Citizenship Initiative has been using its social media presence to track the COVID-19 situation in the country daily, producing a well-documented and easy-to-understand daily analysis of the COVID-19 situation in the country. Workers attached to the Burby's Bridge Company staged a picketing exercise this morning over the failure of the management of the company to provide them with adequate protective equipment for their jobs. In a statement, again, Agricultural and General Workers Union complained that the actions of the Bridge Company are contrary to the rules of the Occupational Safety and Health Act. According to the union, the company has refused to replace the personal protective equipment used by the workers that got damaged while they were on the job. According to the workers, they were told that they have already received their PPE entitlements and they should be the ones to purchase any new replacements. God were reminded that according to the Occupational Safety and Health Act, an employer shall ensure that the equipment, materials and protective devices and clothing as prescribed are provided. God will set it appears as though the management of the bridge is either ignorant of the Occupational Safety and Health Act or is ignoring the rights of the workers. The company said it is disturbing that the workers must raise their voices in order for their lawful rights to be respected. The Burby's Bridge Company has not responded to the claims. Turning now to the world of business in its effort to make doing business easier for its customers, local telecommunications company GTT has installed nine additional GTT Express self-service kiosks to add customers in paying their bills and top up in less than three minutes. The GTT Express kiosks are now available at GTT's Fogarty store, Giftland Grove and the Perica locations. The kiosk will allow customers to pay their GTT bills with cash, a Visa, debit or MasterCard and customers will also have have the option to choose either a printed receipt at a kiosk or have it sent via email or SMS after each transaction. The company's chief operating officer of mobile services, Richard Stanton, said that the company is pleased to introduce more innovative ways to help reduce the amount of time a customer spends at its retail stores and in consideration of the COVID-19 pandemic to conduct their business in a relatively safe environment. 
He said the company's efforts will not stop here, and the company will continue to explore other innovative ways to align with its Together We Rise promises. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. Dollar, come get your Buster, Buster $100. Dollar. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right, walk in upright ways. Knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. I swear you're always late, Mom. I told you two hours ago I'm coming to take you on the road and you still ain't ready yet? Not today. I hear you looking, I gotta pay my phone bill, I'm an internet bill, and I can't find it in the post. You're bringing it just the other day, man. Like I said, you're always late. You know GTT sending you bills straight to your WhatsApp now with their new WhatsApp billing service? Let me show you how to sign up on the website. No more querying at the office. Doesn't matter if bills come late in the mail anymore. Even if you lose the again at the house, all you need to do from now on is open WhatsApp to access your monthly bills. No, you can tell me that. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Across the region tonight, the Chilean health regulator has approved the COVID-19 vaccine produced by China's Sinovac Biotech Limited for use in children over six years of age, allowing more people to be included in the country's rapid inoculation campaign. The South American country has already approved the use of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine for children over 12, with 654,053 receiving at least one dose since May. Sinovac CoronaVac has formed the backbone, however, of Chile's vaccination campaign, which has seen more than 13 million people of the country's 19 million population fully inoculated so far, and 19.49 million CoronaVac doses issued in total. Five of the experts on the evaluation panel convened by the Institute of Public Health in Chile voted in favor of applying the shot to children over the age of six, while two voted in favor of issuing it only to those above the age of 12. CoronaVac also has emergency approval for use in children in Indonesia and China. In neighboring Brazil, police are out in full force in Brazil's capital of Brasilia, where supporters of far-right President Jair Bolsonaro have responded to his calls to rally. Extra officers have been deployed to guard the Supreme Court, following warnings that Mr. Bolsonaro's supporters may try to storm the building. It comes after the president accused the Supreme Court and Congress of blocking his reforms. Critics say he wants to put on a show of strength amid plummeting ratings. One recent opinion poll gave former President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva a 9 percentage point lead over Mr. Bolsonaro in the first round of voting. While elections are not due to be held until October of next year, Mr. Bolsonaro's approval ratings have also dropped to an all-time low. And finally tonight, international news. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was hit by gravel thrown by protesters during a campaign stop. 
He was returning to his bus after visiting a brewery when he was pelted by gravel. He was not injured. Mr. Trudeau called a snap election in mid-August in the hope of gaining a majority government for his left-of-center Liberal Party. But his campaign has been disrupted by demonstrations against COVID-19 vaccine mandates and other restrictions. Just over a week ago, the Prime Minister was forced to cancel an election rally after a crowd of angry protesters ambushed the event. Speaking to journalists on his campaign plane after the incident in London, Ontario, Mr. Trudeau said he may have been hit on the shoulder. According to a reporter with Canada's CTV National News, two people traveling on a media bus were also hit by the gravel, although they were not injured. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.